Everybody. I know why everybody's looking at me because I'm on YouTube but uh hope you guys are doing well it is almost 8 a.m. I've done been out took care of business for a couple hours came back and now I'm uh, doing a video because uh, I just have to I gotta take care of my subscribers but uh, I got some questions last night I was watching Bonafide live and uh, Everybody and their mother knows Chris and who the Bonafide Hustler is, but if you haven't checked them out, check that dude out, man. Every time he mentions my name on the show, my subscribers go up 10 to 15 subscribers. And uh, if we stay on pace like this, that's 60 subscribers a month, and uh, 60 times 12 after another year, I'll be happy. Um, but thank you, Chris, for that shout. And um, first and foremost, today we have to have a moment of silence because we are mourning the death the death of the hall video um, I can't do hall videos no more it's just it's it's become mundane and it's boring everybody's doing it and uh, if you saw the video I put out the other day about the good businessman and the bad businessman um, you'll understand I've I've looked at my subscribers I'm about 265 subscribers as it stands right now and I understand that it's going to take work to build my subscribers up and I have to just be consistent have content and the main thing is be consistent and have content everything else will fall into place if I if I continue to do that but I follow my analytics like with eBay, I, I follow my sales reports. Uh, you have to know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, then you're, you're pretty much asked out. Because you have to know what's popular and what's not. Whether you're in sales, whether dealing with your wife. You're, you're not going to go downtown on your wife every time you have sex if she doesn't like it. But if you're doing it every time and she doesn't like it, she's not happy. Sorry to use that analogy. It just popped in my head. And, and, and that's the truth. You, you have to do what people like and I looking at my YouTube analytics every time I speak on certain things my views are way high my subscribers go up so I, I'm just gonna follow and continue to do what people like and want to see and haul videos is not what people want to see that's what everybody's doing and, and it was cool for a while but I've been doing this, I've been on YouTube since August, and I started making videos probably November, I want to say November of last year, maybe October, November, but, uh, I mean, that's, month, I mean, I mean, you're coming up on, what is it, like eight months, November, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. that's seven months of haul videos and... It's just, uh, everybody's doing it. I'm subscribed to about 50 people, excuse me. <laughs> I for, uh, forgive me for that, guys. My windows are open and I'm not closing them because it's beautiful out right now. But, um, that's seven months of haul videos and it, everybody's doing it. And I'm subscribed to people. Recently, I just unsubscribed to a bunch of people because if, if the ultimate goal on YouTube, guys, I don't care what nobody says. The ultimate goal on YouTube is marketing. That's what we're all on here for. If you're in our little resale crew, whether you get along or you don't get along, you're still in the picking community. And there's a lot of people that don't get along with other people, um, but it's still the picking community. You know what I mean? I credit Trash Talk and Treasures for bringing us all together because most of the people I met, besides Glendon Cameron, well, I never met him, but most of the people that I watch it currently uh, were people that were watching Trash Talking Treasures. And I hope Trash Talking Treasures 
comes back because the show was the shit. There was a rough patch and people weren't getting along, but man, we can get over that. And, and that, that show was very, very popular, and I feel like the community needs that show. Um, but Chris is doing good too. But Bonafide Live is the shit. Everybody loves it. I love it. And like he said last night, it's it's so positive in there, and that's really what we need. It's all good, fun and games to joke and, and play around, but the positivity just just makes it so much better. And I'm I'm really digging that. So um, and I just might check out the fitness channel too, Chris. So uh, um, getting on to my next thing, I got some questions last night, and this was after Bonafide Live went off, but it was late, and I had to get up. I didn't end up going to sleep till very late, and then I only got an hour of sleep anyway. But it was crazy. But I just want to go over some of the questions that people had asked, and go over what I do as far as uh eBay and Craigslist and stuff like that goes, you have to consider when you're doing an eBay listing, number one, that um, in the past few years, I, I say the last two, three years, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think the numbers are like 40%, it's like a 40% increase in the number of people that are making purchases from their phones. And when you think about the money that that generates, it's a crazy number. So, with that in mind, I used to do my listings, and I used to go to sites like Photo Bucket and get uh, like like pictures and put pictures in my in my listing description. Like, say if I did something with Jordan, say I sold a pair of, of Jordan shoes or something like that, I would find a picture like a flashing picture with the jump man, and I would put that in my description. But I never considered the fact that a person that was checking out my listing on their iPhone would not see the picture flashing. They would see the HTML code or just a bunch of jumbled mess. And you have to take that into consideration when you're doing your listings. You have to make your listing viewable for every single device. So what I do, and this is just me, you, and, and, as people are learning and, and, and feeling their way around eBay, they're gonna get their own little ways and stuff. But what I do is I pick the darkest font and I pick the biggest font. And don't do all caps. I mean, cap, I mean, do regular punctuation and stuff like that. But that's it. The biggest font, the darkest font. And I, I do listings for my phone. I do listings for my netbook. And I always check my listings from my phone to see how they look for people that have a phone. And I don't have an iPhone. I have, this is my phone here. It is a smartphone, but it's a cricket smartphone. I'll show it to you. I get a text message right when I pick it up. But that's my phone, and for me and my girlfriend's uh, phone service, I pay $110 a month. And my girlfriend's not here no more, but I'm still going to pay the bill because I'm not a dick. But um, it's only 110 bucks a month. We get unlimited talk, text, and web. It's awesome. But um, keep in mind that you have to make your listings viewable to all devices. It's not just computers that people are buying stuff on these days. And as time goes on in the next 10, 15 years, laptops are going to be obsolete. Laptops are going to go the way of VCRs. They're going to be out of here. Everything's going to be handheld, and it's probably going to get smaller than that. It's going to be paper-thin computers that you can fold up and put in your pocket soon. And that's no bullshit. So keep that in mind when you're listening. Um, marketing. When you go on eBay or Craigslist or any of those, well, Craigslist, maybe not so much, but eBay, definitely. When you put a listing up, you can't just do your listing, put it up, and let it go. You have to market it. you got to get eyes on it. So one thing you definitely have to do is get a Pinterest account, get a Twitter account, and if you don't have a Facebook account, you're way behind the eight ball, but have a Facebook account too. And when you do your listing, after you list it, you go to your listing, where it says, uh, would you like to view your listing, go to it, go down the page a little bit, and you'll see a little Pinterest sign, a Twitter sign, and a Facebook sign. And you go to Pinterest, you type in what the product is, it'll have a link to your eBay, and you put the price, and I always do, most of my listings are free priority shipping, and uh, I'll put the price, and then I go to Twitter. Um, it will say, I believe on Twitter it says, Look at what I found on at eBay, and then it gives you the HTTP forward slash and the 
and all that bull stuff, all that bull crap. Um, take out the look what I found on or at eBay. Delete all that up to the HTTP. You want you you have to have the the link in there on your Twitter because you want to keep it as short as possible. People's looking at this on their phone or whatever on the go, and you don't want to have um, a big huge tweet. People don't like reading big tweets. So keep it as short as possible, and then put free ship if you have if you have free shipping. That's what I do. So my 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 description on Twitter might be 20 to 30 characters, if that. So keep that in mind. And then when you go to Facebook, the same thing. Try to keep it short. But if you're using like me, I started a um, business Facebook page, and um, it's called Amy's Place. I named it after my girl, kind of how I named my eBay store after my girl. But um. I never use Amy's Place, and uh, I just use my personal Facebook page. I mean, I may have to change that, but as for right now, it works fine. I, I sell to friends, it works for eBay, it works for everything else, the certain Craigslist ads, I mean, it, it works fine, but um, you don't want to overdo it. Like with me, I might do four or five eBay listings at once, and then I'll show for a couple days. Or I might take four or five pictures of a certain item that I picked up or something like that and then I'll chill for a couple days because you don't just want to have a page that's constantly bombarding people with eBay listings and, and just trying to sell people stuff you want to have a page that's engaging where you talk to people and you laugh and joke and you say, share different things you don't want to just keep shoving eBay listings down people's throats because they, they're, they're not going to like it they, they really ain't now next on my list here is develop an online presence. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, definitely. Most of us in the picking community on YouTube are associated with each other on Google Plus. But like blogger, even if you don't do blogs, uh, I know like um, uh, Brent does blogs, uh, Venice Fetcher does blogs, Glenda does blogs, and I have uh, uh, there's another guy, Jake Smith. He does. He just started doing blogs. Now I have uh, I had the alert set to when these guys put up new blogs. I'll go and read them. Uh, me myself, I hate writing, and it's just something I'm not good at, and I really don't like doing it. But I like being a part of it. You can interact with the people, and you'll know what they're talking about, and it will help you know what's trending. Because trends change like people change underwear. And to be good at your business, you got to know what's trending, what's popular, what people are talking about. And the only way to know what people are talking about is to go to blogs and see see what Brent or Glendon or, or Vintage Fetcher or them guys were talking about because chances are if they're talking about it then it's hot and that's what you want to be on you know what I mean they may they may have a different niche they may have a different niche whatever you call it but you can get a basic idea of what's hot in the picking community so that's the different things I do as far as um for for trending and stuff like that and always follow your analytics on eBay and YouTube and all them because if you don't know what's selling and what's not then how how do you know what to buy I mean it's just crazy but definitely develop your online presence you've got to have a Facebook got to have a Twitter got to have a Google Plus got to have a Pinterest if you don't have them you, you you're doing pretty bad you've got to have those it is a must and then you can market your eBay on those not only your eBay but everything like when I do flea markets I'll put something up on there I'll be like hey I'm selling at the flea market if you know me personally I'll give you 10% off you know stuff like that and people will come people have came to my table like hey you gonna give me 10% off I'm like yeah you know I have a dollar table I have a two dollar table I have a three dollar table I'll give you you pick a few things I'll give you 10% off the final price no big deal um, my final thing here is your only and, and, and this goes for YouTube and in life you are only as good as the people you surround yourself with. My mother used to tell me this, and I never understood it until I hit my 20s and my 30s, but you could be a saint. You could be the best guy in the world helping old ladies cross the street, but if you're hanging with a bunch of guys that smoke crack, you're a crackhead. That's just it. You're a crackhead. That's how people's going to view you. The same thing on YouTube. If you're doing hangouts and associating with people that do nothing but start trouble and, and cause problems in the community and stuff like that that's how you're going to be viewed that's why I unsubscribed from a bunch of people well one person got his page shut down <laughs> so I didn't have to really unsubscribe from him 
But uh, he's got another page, but it's only got like 14 subscribers. And 13 of them are 12 year olds. <laughs> so, uh, God forgive me, I shouldn't be joking like that. But uh, hey, you, you you get what you dish out. And uh, that's, that's what happens when you uh, base your entire life around making fun of people. I guess that's what happens. But uh, back to the uh, surrounding yourself with good people. Um, if you don't drink, and you surround yourself with a bunch of drunks, you're going to be a drunk. That's just what it is. So you got to surround yourself with positive people, people that's going to benefit you in one way or the other. Um, there's a lot of people that get on YouTube and say they, they're just here to help and they want to be Mother Teresa. And I think it's bullcrap. I mean, everybody has an agenda. I have an agenda. I'm on YouTube for the networking. Um, that kind of leads me into my next point. Um, if you network with people and you stay on YouTube and you put out content, you're eventually going to start meeting people. And as you meet people, you're going to be able to go to where these people live. And uh, my neighbor's outside and it's pissing me off. I'm getting ready to yell out the fucking window. Shut the fuck up. All right. I had to calm down for it. That shit was pissing me off. All right. People are just crazy, man, nowadays. <laughs> But uh, I'm not even going to edit that out. I'll leave that in. But uh, I don't know. I, I forget what I was talking about. That shit was pissing me off. Um, that last point I was making, before the last point about surrounding yourself with good people. Oh, yeah, back to the uh, why I'm on YouTube and why it, everybody is on YouTube. Everybody has an agenda. And um, my thing is, is building a network and having people that I can potentially go meet and see that you know have a grip on their area as far as reselling goes like i know if i went to pennsylvania and hollered at brent on facebook like look i'm in your neighborhood you know can we hook up and take me to a couple thrift stores he would do it or if i went to another part of pennsylvania and hooked up with paul i'm sure he would do it or if i went to atlanta and i'm sure glenda would do it and, and that's how you got to be um it, you got to really establish you got to be like an octopus, have your tentacles and a little bit of everything, a little bit of everywhere. And that's kind of how I'm trying to be. Um, it's cool that I'm meeting so many people on YouTube because I'm meeting people that can move products I can't move. And I can move products that they can't move. And it's this YouTube thing is, I see it blowing up to a point to where eventually this is going to be a great selling channel. Now, I've sold on here before. Not a lot, only a couple times, maybe, you know, three times. And I know other people have too. And I know College Picker was uh, the original person that I saw bring the idea up. And it's a great idea. And it's going to take time. I know it is. But um, if we stay with it and continue to, to, to sell to each other and stuff like that, I think this is going to be really popular. And then YouTube's going to have to change their format. And uh, they're going to catch on. And then they're, they're going to be like, no, you ain't going to make money for free off of my, my stuff. It will happen, believe me. It's years down the road, but it will happen. But uh, that's really all I had to say, guys. Um, once again, let's have a moment of silence for the death of the whole video. I'm done with all videos. <laughs> Y'all done seen every damn snapback from here to San Francisco. Good Lord. Every snapback, every damn Yahtzee game, every... Good Lord. So the whole videos, at least for me, are done. Um, here and there, I periodically, I'll pull out something cool that I got. I'll be like, hey, you know, I'll pay 10 bucks for this, check it out. But I, I, I have to follow what's popular, and to continue doing things that are, that are not popular just doesn't make any sense. So that's my advice for you guys. I hope you guys got a, at least a little bit out of that. And uh, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe, and uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace!